Welcome to Gab and Dad. Two generations go to the movies. My daughter Gabrielle. I'm her father, obviously. Uh, the movie we've been to see in the last day or two is State of Play. Uh, and Gab, why don't you tell the audience a little bit about what this film is uh, about? Thank you, Dad. Uh, You're welcome, Gab. <laughs> State of Play is not that funny. It's a political thriller, supposed to be, um, starring Ben Affleck as a rising star congressman and uh, Russell Crowe as a scrappy reporter. Uh, have you heard this one before? And they're friends that go way back to college days and when the congressman gets embroiled in some nefarious seedy uh, things of various categories. Uh, Russell Crowe gets involved as his friend and but also and could say primarily as a reporter seeking the truth in this story that is political and corporate and and ultimately emotional to a certain degree. And this film, this feature film, Two Hours Long, is a version of a BBC miniseries from some years ago which was six hours, six one-hour segments, and one issue is can you transplant this kind of plot and these kinds of characters from London, England, from an English newspaper, from an investigation of the uh, British Parliament to Washington DC to a two-hour feature film to a very different environment. Lots of issues there. Lots of issues there. <laughs> and in my view is, as somebody who was born in England and lived there for some considerable time, and including fairly recently, my view is they failed to do this. Uh, first of all, they take a complex six-hour plot strip some of the elements out of it, put it into two hours, and that dramatically diminishes the, the pace and the interest of the story. And secondly, some essential ingredients of the miniseries are things like how the British political system works, uh, how the flavor of London, England, which is very distinctive as we all know, uh, the class system that operates in England, and all those things cannot easily or at all be moved to Washington, D.C. So I think a rather unusual and high quality on the whole English six-hour thriller turns into a rather drab and plodding American two-hour feature film. I didn't come at it from that perspective. I had not seen uh, the miniseries so I didn't bring uh, the sort of preset uh, expectations or high bar with me to apply to this. Sure. Um, I was approaching it merely as the latest release political thriller. I really dragged her to this one. Last time she dragged me to <laughs> I Love You Man but I dragged her to this one because I thought, you know, this is the kind of film that I could easily enjoy. Well, this is kind of I Love You Man with Russell Crowe and Ben Affleck, but yeah. then they throw a lot of other stuff in there, yeah. including lots of black helicopters for no Oh, yeah, purpose. just the thing about these helicopters. Periodically in this film, they show a shot of a sinister black helicopter circling around in the sky. Yeah. Now, why it's doing that, who's in, who's it? in it, what the point of it, it is. It wasn't even that periodically. No, every now and again it shows up. Like when the up. editor didn't know what to do, they threw you know, in the, throw in the heli Send in the helicopter. There's one now! Yeah, don't send in the clowns, send in the helicopters. So that to me was just a piece of rather adolescent movie making. We digress, but we, I mean the fact digress. that we were giggling about that during the movie doesn't yeah. speak extremely well about yeah. the other aspects of the yeah. film. Um, but back to why I went to see this film, um, it would probably primarily have to be because of the cast. On paper, certainly interesting, eclectic, um, besides the two mains, you've got Helen Mirren, you've got Jeff Daniels, you've got Jason Bateman, you've got Rachel McAdams. Um, so Robin Wright Penn. Robin Wright Penn. A really bad performance. So they're trying to sort of cover all the bases in that respect, but it's really Russell Crowe's movie. I'm a fan. Um, I think he can pretty much do any role. This is the kind that yeah, he, he, he basically can do in his sleep and sort of looks this like is, he rolled way, out of bed. This is, yeah, there he is, looking like he just rolled out of bed. A very seedy character who's I don't know whether we put seedy. I don't know whether we put on a lot of weight for this film, but he's kind of corpulent and shaggy and unshaven and seedy and dirty. A bit of a cliche reporter. Yeah, your typical I mean. reporter. <laughs> Let me say something about the acting of this film. Russell Crowe, I agree with you, was was good. He was, you know, he was without him this film would be absolutely dead in the water. For sure. Ben Affleck uh, playing the uh, congressman who on the rise, dreadful. Wooden unconvincing. At one point it looked like he might be shot. That's not a spoiler, I don't think. I'm praying, please shoot him. Get him out of the way. Um, Robin Wright Penn has a minor role as a congressman's wife, as you know. Poor acting. <laughs> Helen Mirren, who I uh, dearly love and admire and have followed her career for a long time, not good in the role of newspaper editor. I think perhaps that's because in the BBC miniseries the role was played brilliantly by Bill Nighy, an actor that I just love, perfect for this role. 
not not Helen Mirren's role, and she's very English. And I kept saying to myself, what what's this English broad doing running the Washington Post? And why does she keep why calling not? why does she keep calling people wankers? Nobody in North America. Knows she was what surrounded wank by wankers. Well, do you know what a wanker is? I sure do. Well, then you're mixing <laughs> with the wrong people. But anyway, those um, are our viewers. Plot plot. <laughs> bad because it didn't transplant properly and it just kind of falls apart after 30 minutes. Acting wooden. You don't get emotionally engaged in this film because you don't care about the congressman and you don't care about this mysterious evil corporation represented I think by these black helicopters. You just don't care. What you really care about is when will this film be over? When can I get out of here? I think that's a bit harsh. Yeah, you don't care about the congressman. I don't think we're really supposed to care about congressmen. Um, and uh, I thought Helen Mirren was great. Again, I didn't bring the, the original casting with me as a preconceived notion, so that wasn't a problem. She was spicy, she was you know, flinty, whatever. Flinty. You want, <laughs> whatever words you want to She use. was better as the queen. She, was, she added to the scenes that she was uh. in, and I believed her as Russell Crowe's boss, uh, the, the, the repartee that they shared, um, and made for some fun scenes. Um, so she was fine. Ben Affleck, he was serviceable. He, I, I, it, he was wooden, so he was a politician. What more do you want? He's a poor actor. He, wasn't, he wasn't the original choice for, in this casting. I had more problem with the age difference. They, they were Ed, supposed Ed to Norton be... was going to be the original. Um, sure, yes. Yes. Um, yeah, he's a fine actor. He would have been much better. Well, you know, what if? Uh, but Russell Crowe and Ben Affleck supposedly being college roommates, that was bugging me the whole time because of the seeming age difference between them. Um, that just seemed like a poor casting um, connection as far as I was concerned. And it distracted me, like the helicopters. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter, but I was thinking about it while I was there, so not a good thing. But now, all of that said, you, you might get the impression that I, I really hated this movie. <laughs> but there were a couple of interesting things about it that redeemed it a little bit. One is, it was a very curious sort of period piece because it was about an investigative reporter in a traditional newsroom. I think it was the Washington Post it was supposed to be. Washington Globe, which Washington is a fictitious. All right. All right. Well, it was meant to be. I hate you know, to do that. And it was a kind of a grimy newsroom with people rushing around with copy, you know, and yelling out. I don't think anybody actually yells out, stop the presses, but they, they could have. And that's a world, as we all know, that if it's not totally disappeared, it's certainly in the process of disappearing. So this was like a period piece about old-fashioned newspaper reporting, which is rapidly being supplanted by the web and by political blogs. Which was so symbolized on. by the pen. The, the young the yeah, Richard McAdams, right. the, wet, the blogger yeah. character, never has a pen yeah, on yeah, her. Yeah, yeah, and Russell yeah, Crowe always, always has, has a pen. So he's a, he's a real little reporter. bit heavy-handed. Uh, he's a real reporter. Symbolism he, there. He uses pens. Yeah. So that was sort of interesting. Pens. It's a period piece. Watch for it on Masterpiece Theatre soon, I suppose. And the other thing was, there was a couple of intriguing attempts to raise ethical issues of some importance. Um, Russell Crowe is not just investigating this congressman, he's a friend of the, this congressman. And indeed it's a complicated friendship because he had an affair with the congressman's wife at some point, which the congressman knows about. So it's a complex personal relationship. Uh, and at one point the congressman, played by Ben Affleck, says, needless to say very woodenly, <laughs> to Russell Crowe, are you here, Cal, that's the name of the reporter, are you here as a reporter or as my friend? So, that, you know, there is an ethical issue there that reporters often have when they're involved in a complex relationship with somebody that they're reporting on. Every writer has experienced that in various ways. And that was interesting. It surfaced slightly a couple of times, well, but then rapidly that. sank back into this, this sort of, you know, stagnant yeah. pond that was the film. And it is a bit of a cliché, but that's oh, all right. Yeah. I mean, they were throwing various issues in there, but sort of as dressing to basically what's supposed to be a thriller plot that never truly delivers. So again, just like the helicopters, yeah. things are yeah. feel you feel like things are being thrown in right. to sort of pad it out, maybe distract yeah, you. Yeah, I think we have. I think we have to end this because story. I, I think we have to stop because there there's, there's a helicopter hovering. They're coming to get us. There's a helicopter. We should never have. We should never have tangled with these people. Don't see the film. Rental? Maybe. Rental, Friday night when you've got nothing else to do.